Welcome back to the playlist on amino acid catabolism. In the last video, what we did is we looked at the glucose alanine cycle, and we also looked at generally how ammonia is transported in the blood. And we saw that it's done by ligating the ammonia ultimately to pyruvate to make alanine or to glutamate to make glutamine. And the enzyme that made glutamine was called glutamine synthetase. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the organic mechanism of glutamine synthetase. And actually throughout the next few videos, we're actually going to look at the mechanism of several of these enzymes, including glutaminase, glutamate dehydrogenase, and some of the transaminases. Okay, so let's look at the mechanism of glutamine synthetase. Now, this mechanism involves ATP. That's why it's referred to as a synthetase. It's ultimately going to be a condensation between glutamate and ammonia. So it's a condensation reaction that, that requires a nucleoside triphosphate. That's why it's referred to as a synthetase. So also keep in mind that this is a magnesium dependent enzyme and the magnesium is used to stabilize the incoming ATP molecule. Remember that magnesium has a two plus charge, phosphates are negatively charged, so that stabilizing effect effect sort of holds the ATP in close proximity so the glutamate lone pair can do a nucleophilic attack on the gamma phosphate of ATP. So this right here, this is the gamma phosphate. And the first step of the mechanism is going to be nucleophilic attack on the phosphorus atom. And that's going to generate a trigonal bipyramidal intermediate that can be seen in the next picture. So we have this trigonal bipyramidal intermediate that's still stabilized by that magnesium ion. And in this step of the mechanism, what's going to happen is, if I can draw my lone pair, in this step of the mechanism, the lone pair is going to cause the collapsing of the trigonal bipyramidal intermediate as the phosphorus oxygen double bond is reformed. And the leaving group in this case is going to be, is going to be adenosine diphosphate. So this molecule that you see over here, this is our leaving group. This is adenosine diphosphate. And ultimately what you get is you get this intermediate right here. This is an intermediate and it's, it's called phosphoglutamate. This is called a, phospho, a phosphoglutamate intermediate, and it's going to quickly be consumed by the last half of the enzymatic mechanism. Okay, now there, are, there is a base in the active site, and the base is going to deprotonate ammonia. And that forces the electrons between the proton and the nitrogen to come up here and attack this carbonyl. In other words, the carbonyl that links glutamate and the phosphate. And that's going to generate a tetrahedral intermediate that can be seen in the next picture. So we have this tetrahedral intermediate that's very quickly going to collapse. And as the carbonyl bond reforms, it kicks off this phosphate, which as it leaves, it reabstracts the proton from this base. And as you can see in the final picture, that generates glutamine. So this molecule right here, this is glutamine. And why is this reaction important? Well, we saw when we did the urea cycle, we saw that that was one way in which we could get rid of ammonia. We can basically put ammonia into the mitochondria through different mechanisms like, like glutamate dehydrogenase and glutaminase, but we can ultimately get ammonia into the mitochondria and then carbamoyl phosphate synthetase one can activate it and we can ultimately excrete it as urea. But this is another mechanism by which we can we can basically eliminate the del del deleterious effects of ammonia on the body. Basically, we can ligate it to glutamate to make glutamine, and this is one method we can drastically reduce the reactivity of ammonia and effectively transport it in the blood. So in other words, glutamine is a way by which we transport ammonia in the blood. The purpose of ligating the ammonia to glutamine is, number one, to make the ammonia less reactive, but also we can transport glutamine to the liver, and in the liver, we can effectively remove the ammonia by using glutaminase,
And then we can also further remove ammonia by reacting the corresponding glutamate with glutamate dehydrogenase. That, of course, yields alpha-ketoglutarate, and we get ultimately from the conversion of glutamine to alpha-ketoglutarate two ammonias. The ammonias then enter the urea cycle through activation by carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1, and the ammonia gets excreted in the form of urea. So that is one of the functions of glutamine. Of course, it has many other functions in the cell as well. Also, what we've seen in this video is we've actually seen another biosynthesis. In a previous video, we saw the biosynthesis of arginine. Now we know the biosynthesis of glutamine without actually doing a biosynthetic chapter. I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on the mechanism of glutamine synthetase. In the next video, we'll do another mechanism. See you soon.